All right, so here's our very last multiplication review video. So we have left the best for last here with our sixes, our sevens, and our eights. Again, these are pretty difficult ones for us to remember. I know even for myself that when I have a multiplication problem that has a factor of one of these three, it does give me a second to pause to kind of retrain my brain. But I've got a few tips on how to do that and how to uh, get a little better at those if they're giving you some trouble. Um, again, if you have a chance, you can take down notes while you watch the video. So you have a, a cheat sheet or a hard copy of what we're going to be learning today. That's up to you for this one. And uh, again, totally up to you. Now, as I said, these are pretty much like the, the typically the most difficult ones to learn. Um, but we're going to use a technique called the known fact. And it's just how it sounds. It means we're going to use something that we already know in order to find the answer to a multiplication problem that we may not know right off the top of our heads. So I'm going to show you uh, different techniques with the sixes, sevens, and eights, and hopefully that could be a technique you can start using or use in the future to get better at your multiplication for these numbers. Um, let's start with the time six facts. Now, um, I've just went right with examples because, again, we'll show the known facts here. But let's talk about 6 times 6. Now, what we can do is use a fact that we know, like 5 times 6. At this point, all of you are already like, well, that's easy. That's 30. So 5 times 6 is that. 6 times 6 means we add one more group of 6s to that 30. And 30 plus 6 is 36. Let's try another one. Um, if you are told what's the answer to eight times six, this is again one where we kind of fall back on those times five facts. Do eight times five, which is 40. And then we add one more group of eight for an answer of 48. So again, it seems pretty handy that we know our times five facts and then we can usually just add that extra group to get our answer. Let's try the sevens. Um, let's try seven times seven, for example. Now this is one we're going to add not one group, but two. So we know seven times five is 35. So we can add two more groups of seven, which in our head, we know that's 14. So we do 35 plus 14, which gives us a 49. Pretty neat. And another example for seven, let's think about seven times four. This one I know my seven times three is 21. So if I add one more group of sevens to that, 21 plus seven is going to give me 28. So for the eights, I'm going to use a technique where we actually are going to subtract from our examples. So you can go either way. You don't have to just add. If you've got a knack for subtraction, this could come in handy too. So let's say you're stuck on how to do eight times eight. Well, we know from learning our nines, yesterday or using your finger trick we know nine times eight is 72. so if we subtract one group of eight from that we know 72 minus eight gives us 64. and our last example is think about eight times four now let's go back to our fives do eight times five is 40. if we subtract one group of eight from that 40 we know 40 minus 8 is going to be 32. So hopefully those have helped you get a little bit more tools and techniques to do your 6s, your 7s, and your 8s. Here's what I suggest. Um, sometimes with math facts like these, just straight up memorization is going to help you the most. Um, in this case, I encourage students to memorize your 6 times 6 your six times seven, your seven times seven, and seven times eight. Those are the ones that really give kids problems. So just try to go ahead and just straight up memorize those. And just so when you see them, you automatically know what it's going to be as far as the answer goes. And there it is. We've done every single math fact over this week. That's great. Um, again, I encourage you to either get a physical copy of a multiplication table. You might want to get one that's zero to 12. Um, but I did just want to review 0 to 10 for this one. But whatever helps you as far as getting the answer, even using a multiplication table, you eventually you'll use it so much that the, the correct answer is going to get 
permanently in your brain, and it should help you. Your homework assignment for Friday uh, 918 is logging into Schoology, watching this video as you've just done, and to review the lesson and log in your reflex. This is the last time I'm going to assign reflex and get yourself a green light and hit your daily goal. Uh, some of you are doing that, which is great. And if you're getting your daily goal, I get that to move you through your class craft. You can earn stuff for your character, which is great. So if you have any questions, I'm available during my office hours or right after math class. Thank you.